Good morning, families. This is Dan Scoggin. I am the co-founder of Great Hearts and the interim superintendent of Great Hearts Texas. And it's such a pleasure to be with you this morning for our second town hall. This is our return to school, our return to learning town hall. And we're so excited to share updated details with you about what the fall will look like. School is just a few weeks away. We're so excited to be teaching your students again and a special shout out to any students who may be watching. We can't wait to be with you again. And our teachers are so excited to begin the classical liberal arts learning journey with you again shortly. As a reminder, school starts in San Antonio on Wednesday, August 12th, uh, online on time and in North Texas on Wednesday, August 19th. So just a few weeks away. And that's the point today, just to share all the details with you families about what school will look like in great detail. To that end, we will start by talking about Great Hearts Distance Learning, which has been significantly redesigned based on your feedback. Thank you so much, uh, families, for all the details and feedback that you gave us since our last town hall. And in working with our academic leadership team, we have lots, lots of details to share with you. What will the school year look like? What will the school day look like for your scholar? How will we evaluate and give feedback to your scholars uh, in just a few short weeks? We're excited to share those details with you. So we'll offer about a 20 minute presentation on Great Hearts Distance Learning and then open it up to questions from you. Some of the questions that were pre-submitted before this town hall and then additional questions that we'll be taking from the Facebook live feed. And then we will transition to our brick and mortar reopening once again, as soon as allowable by local health orders. And as soon as we can safely return to school, we look forward to welcoming your scholars back to our campuses for those that choose that pathway for quarter one. So we look forward to that. So we'll be sharing details on our face covering policy, our protocol uh, in case there's a, a COVID case that we find in one of our schools all of those details will be shared with you as well. And then we'll open up to further, further Q&A. So while this town hall will share lots of information, I want to assure you that we are recording it and we will make this town hall available for you to watch at a later time if you want to dig more deeply into it. And then at the end of the town hall, I'll share next steps with you, including the town halls that your headmasters will be hosting in the very near future, specific to your campus. So as we begin, I'd like to introduce our distinguished panelists, uh, the rest of the Great Hearts leadership team that will be presenting uh, this morning. So we have Andrew Ellison, the Executive Director of Great Hearts San Antonio. Hello, Andrew. We have David Denton, the Executive Director of our North Texas Academies. Hi, David. We have Curtis Endorf, our Executive Director of Instruction. Hello, Curtis. And we also have uh, some headmasters here who will be working closely with the leadership team on bringing us back to school. So Dr. William Rutherford from Monta Vista North. Hi, Dr. Rutherford. We have Monet Lesner from Monta Vista South. We have uh, Matthew Vlavich from Great Hearts Western Hills. And we have Alicia Landry, our director of school support for all of Great Hearts Texas. And then of course, Trinette Keffer, the headmaster of Great Hearts Northern Oaks Lower School. They will be participating in our conversation today and helping to answer questions. I'm now gonna turn it over to my close colleague, Jake Taney, our uh, Vice President of Curriculum for Great Hearts America. He's gonna share a little bit about the feedback we received from you families, and then we'll jump into Great Hearts Distance Learning. So passing the mic to you, Jake. Thank you, Dan, and, and thank you, families. Thank you for being here for our second town hall. It was just a few weeks ago that we hosted a first town hall, and, and here we are again on the cusp of a brand new school year. Uh, first and foremost, I would want to tell you that we're excited. We're excited for the new school year. Our teachers are excited to teach. Our students are excited to learn. Uh, and, and even in these seemingly ever-changing times, the, the energy surrounding a new school year uh, is, is palpable. Our, our goal today is simple. It, it is to update you. And I want to start with uh, just some updates on the distance learning program. Uh, at Great Hearts, we are committed to conversation. 
it, that conversation forms the backbone of, of our teaching. It forms the backbone of our pedagogy in the classroom, that, that commitment to Socratic dialogue, Socratic conversation from, from kindergarten Singapore math all the way up through 12th grade humane letters. But our, our commitment to conversation extends beyond the classroom uh, and also applies to, to the way that we're committed to conversation with you, with you as parents. And uh, over the past several weeks, we've gotten some, some really robust and amazing feedback following our first town hall. Uh, I think I responded to well over 100 emails myself, uh, fielded dozens of phone calls, and I know I'm not alone. My colleagues, uh, Dan and Curtis and the other executive directors, uh, I know we're responding to an equal number of emails and phone calls. Uh, and, and on behalf of the Texas team, uh, I wanna say two things. So number one, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to put down in writing or to pick up a phone to engage that conversation with us. Because it's that conversation that makes us better. And number two, we heard you. Uh, in fact, just very personally, I heard you. And, and there are three things that, that we heard very specifically with regards to the, the, the distance learning program that, that has helped us to get better. Number one, as parents, you want a close connection for your students with the school, with the teacher in the school, even during a distance learning program. Number two is as part of that close connection, uh, you want more video touch points, especially live video instruction. And number three, as parents, you are as committed to the Great Hearts curriculum as we are. And you wanna ensure for your students some continuity between uh, the distance learning program and the experience in the classroom so that, so that when you and your student are ready uh, to return to the building safely, that transition can be seamless. Now there's a fourth thing we heard, uh, which is much more numeric than that, that high quality uh, feedback. Uh, and that is that surprisingly, 50% of you uh, are interested in the distance learning program for at least the first quarter. The other 50% are interested in coming back to the building safely uh, when, when we're permitted. Of course, everyone's starting with distance learning. But when we got these numbers and we received your robust feedback, it allowed us to, to regroup uh, and to ask, how can we make this program better? Now, in response to number one, that desire for a close connection to the school, students will now be fully enrolled in their academy and taught by a teacher from their school. In response to number two, video contact, uh, especially live video instruction, will be a, a really important part of distance learning. And in response to number three, students in the distance learning program will be held to the same academic standards as their in-building peers, so that when they are ready to return to the building safely, that experience can be seamless. So once again, thank you for that feedback. We're really excited today to, to talk through some of those details. And in the spirit of having that close connection to the buildings, uh, I'm delighted to turn this over to my colleague, Curtis Indorf, who will, will flesh out some of the details, but I think more importantly, we'll turn it over to headmasters who can talk in a very specific and personal way about what this looks like at their building. And so without further ado, uh, the Executive Director for Instruction in Great Hearts, Texas, my, my colleague, Curtis Indorf. Great. Thank you so much, Jake and Dan. Thank you to the families, to the guardians, to the loved ones who are here with us today. We are eager to share with you our plans for Great Hearts, Texas distance learning. To echo a point already shared, thank you for your feedback. We listened, we learned, we changed. We will be providing a rich, substantial education strong instruction and community formation all year long. And after our period of all of us engaged in distance learning per county health orders, you can join Great Hearts Texas Distance Learning for one quarter at a time or for the entire year. We approach this work with both confidence and humility, confidence in our leaders, confidence in our faculty, confidence in our curriculum and our mission, and humility in the things that we haven't learned yet, but we will and the things next week, next month, next quarter that we'll learn together and we'll learn from you. And we will adjust and change and continue growing together. I wanna to start us off by talking through the three anchors 
of our Great Hearts Texas distance learning design. The first of those is that our curriculum and content will be equivalent, but not identical. Students online will take the same courses as in person. And students online will receive an equivalent level of rigor, equivalent curriculum, equivalent learning, and equivalent content. But as we know, equivalent does not mean equal. Online students will receive an education that is specific to the form of online. That means that some content will go slower, some content will go faster. Assessments will look a little bit different. They'll be more frequent online with fewer three-week unit assessments because that is best practice for online education. Our second anchor of our design is that attendance and engagement is required of all students. Following the paradigm of an equivalent education, all distance learning students will have a daily program of regular structured school in which they must participate. The new Great Hearts Texas Distance Learning is not homeschool. Rather, it is school at home. Our third anchor of design is focused on community and culture. It is not enough for distance learning students to be academically engaged in school. Opportunities must also be present for social and emotional engagement with teachers and peers. You all said that very, very clearly in your feedback. Community formation plans are currently being developed by all campuses for the coming year. To highlight what this will mean, we're gonna run through some pieces that will be different in August, 2020 than in the spring. The first of those is the instructional schedule. Every grade level will have a week to week schedule in the same way that students have a week to week schedule when they attend in-person school. Lower school students will have some video contact with their teacher daily, whether that is synchronous, live, or asynchronous recorded. Upper school students will have at least three contacts with each classroom teacher a week, whether that is synchronous, live, or asynchronous recorded. Next week on Monday and Tuesday, campuses will host campus-specific town halls to share more with you. As a parent, you wanna know, what does this look like for my kid? What does this look like for my school? What does this look like for their relationship? Next week, you can learn more. But for now, I'm excited to introduce Director of School Support, Alicia Landry, and Headmaster Matt Vlavich of Great Hearts Western Hills to share an example of what this might look like for a seventh grade student. Thank you. Uh, first of all, just to share a little bit about the process, uh, we wanted the scheduling of the digital learning to really come from the hands of the teachers. Uh, so this is not some cooked up template that we're trying to force uh, into different scenarios, uh, but really the result of teachers working together, uh, the teachers who best know the curriculum and the various uh, ways of teaching different content, uh, best practices for different subject areas. Another thing that was really important for us is continuity. Uh, we know and are hoping for the day that the brick and mortar students return to campus. And so we wanna make sure that when that happens, there's not a huge disruption for our distance learning students, uh, but that their schedules can go on uh, as they've been from the get-go. The last thing that we've really been thinking about is uh, a variety of modes. Uh, so no longer just the categories of asynchronous or synchronous, uh, but working with teachers and grade level leads to think, uh, where do we use direct instruction? Where does it make sense to have full class discussions? How do we utilize independent readings and activities and small groups and even one-on-one -on -one tutoring with the teachers? Uh, so these are all the things that we took into consideration as we started working through these schedules with the teachers. So let's talk about Tuesday. We'll start our day off with a morning check-in. This happens when our teachers and our students connect they review the daily schedule and they get the opportunity to see other classmates. Some sections may require students to log into Google Classroom and complete the assignments, like the literature and composition section, and others may require students to review videos, then complete independent work at the end. We will provide group and individual tutoring sessions. These sessions will be coordinated by teachers. Each teacher will also have a block section for office hours 
where, te- where students and parents get to join to p- get any type of support they may need. Thank you so much, Alicia and Matt, for sharing an example of what that looks like. You all will be able to learn more next week at your campus-specific town halls. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Executive Director Andrew Ellison, to continue sharing more about how this will look different in the fall than it did last spring. Andrew. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Curtis, and thank you, Great Hearts Texas families uh, and teachers and headmasters uh, and everyone else who's, who's joining uh, to, to watch and listen and engage with us in conversation here this morning about Great Hearts Distance Learning. Um, one of the things uh, that families were asking for and teachers were asking for after last spring was if, if we have to approach distance learning again, we need to take a different approach at Great Hearts to grading, scoring, marking, and academic feedback for our students. In short, uh, families and students want to know more frequently and in more detail how they're doing. Just like in the bricks and mortar, uh, just like in building school, Students want to get their homework back, correct it. Students want the kind of interaction with teachers so they're going to see quickly what problems they got right, uh, where they made mistakes, where they need to grow. Teachers need to see that more quickly as well. So last spring, we had the packet-based learning system. Students would do all their work for a week, submit it. Teachers would work through it. Students really didn't have a way of getting back more than just a, a, a brief summary. Uh, of, of how they had done on all those subjects for a whole week. So we're going to do it differently this time around at Great Arts Distance Learning. Utilizing Google Classroom, all student work will be regularly and rapidly corrected, scored, marked, graded, and returned to students quickly on an assignment by assignment basis, not in a summative way for an entire week's worth of work at a, at a snapshot or a glance that doesn't necessarily offer the kind of vital detail uh, that students and families are, are looking for. We're not going to do pass-fail grades this time around in gray arts distance learning. And, and folks know everything I'm saying describes how the 100% remote learning plan is going to start for all Texas students. It also holds true. It's valid for every student who stays in gray arts distance learning throughout the year after we are able to bring students and teachers back into our buildings. Uh, So uh, for lack of a better term, real grading and academic feedback and scoring uh, for student learning in uh, in this upcoming uh, period. Second thing I want to speak about uh, really follows from from that. Great Hearts Distance Learning will be 100% online starting at the very beginning of school this year for all students and staying the same for those who elect to remain in the program later in the year. We're not gonna do paper packets anymore. That was a different time, a more leisurely pace. Uh, Students sort of had a self-study program that they could work through uh, at their own schedule, at their own leisure over the course of the week. Why are we not gonna do that anymore? Well, there's a couple reasons. Uh, First of all, as Curtis mentioned, we've got to do a lot more student-teacher interaction in distance learning this time around. That's what students and families want. That's what they're craving. That's what teachers want. Um, It has to be a world different from merely delivering content and self-study activities. Curtis said before, I really like this formulation. Uh, If what we were asking everyone to do back in the spring was homeschooling, it's different this time around. We're going to provide the kind of daily check-ins, assignments, and and family engagement, uh, uh, daily student activities and assignments online through Zoom and Google Classroom uh, that are going to enable students to to know how much they're learning, teachers to be able to see that. Um, So packets will be gone. We're not going to do the pick up and turn in anymore. 100% only accessible of distance learning through the Google Classroom platform. Uh, and through the Zoom video platform for live instruction, uh, for discussions, for tutoring, and, and, and for other activities as well. Students will be required to engage on a daily basis in the new Great Hearts Distance Learning. Folks, again, if you recall the packets last semester, students could complete those, families could complete those at their own pace. 
maybe a doctor's appointment or something comes up on a Wednesday or a Friday and students work through the weekend completing their packet. It's very much self-guided, self-study, self-learning, or as parents know, and I know that this was uh, really challenging for a lot of families, it was parent-guided, parent-structured student learning at home through packets. It's going to be different this time around. Students will be obliged, required to attend, participate in video instruction daily. They will be required to log into Google Classroom on a daily basis so that students have more structure at home. Again, I already heard about the, uh, the, 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 the solid instructional schedule that's going to be regular for students. Matt and Alicia shared that with you a few minutes ago. Daily engagement and attendance will be required. And this is better for students. Teachers want this too. This is what families were, were asking for uh, last spring. And certainly what teachers were asking for as well. Uh, more guarantees of daily participation, activity, learning, and engagement for students. I would be remiss if I did not also state uh, that the great state of Texas has a lot higher bar for schools, for public schools this year, uh, about measuring student engagement, measuring and recording and reporting to the Texas Education Authority, student attendance, participation and engagement in distance learning. We think this is a good thing. Schools should be held accountable for showing that they are doing something more than just delivering content to students, crossing their fingers and hoping that learning is taking place. We're so committed to feeding the hearts, minds, and souls of our students with rich intellectual content, truth, goodness, and beauty. We're excited to require daily engagement, uh, daily participation from our students. It's just better for teaching and, and better for learning. Uh, and so that's how things are going uh, to be different in a number of ways in Great Hearts Distance Learning this upcoming semester. For all of us at the beginning of the year, and it will stay exactly the same for students who elect, who opt into the program uh, subsequently to that over the rest of the semester, over the rest of the year. So back to you, Curtis. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, building off that exact point, uh, we also will be having equivalent student learning. We expect of ourselves and of our students equivalent student learning. And we're working towards this with diligence, love, and commitment to all of our students and to our families. At Great Hearts Texas, we use thoughtful assessments to measure student learning so we can adjust instruction and provide above and beyond intervention for students. We are excited to share that equivalent assessments and data form instruction strategy will happen online and in person. And as of this moment, the Texas Education Agency is still requiring STAR assessment at the end of the year for all kids, whether that is online or in person. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Thank you for that, Curtis. And, and there, folks, you may have seen studies that came out after last spring all over the country. There's evidence that American students were not well served by the spring season of distance learning from coast to coast. Uh, some students did, did reasonably well. A great many of students fell off the map, uh, didn't make progress in, in basics, mathematics, reading and writing. So as a country, we've got to do a lot better we have to do a lot better. Texas has to do a lot better. Great Hearts is excited and wants to do a lot better at ensuring that our students are, are making progress in those basic skills of, of reading, writing, and, and mathematics. So one other thing, uh, a, a key anchor of the new distance learning our approach this year is more intentional work at, at school level uh, to build forms of culture and community in the online and the digital platforms and media. Uh, so to speak a little bit more about our intentional approach, uh, I've asked Headmaster Monet Lesner of Great Hearts Monta Vista Lower School to share some examples of how their school is going to be doing this as we kick off the new school year. Monet. Sure. So we really want our scholars to feel connected to their teachers and their class as we begin distance learning at home this year. So some of the ways that we're gonna do this will be that kinder through second grade will have a weekly snack and tell. So during this time, they'll have snack over Zoom with their classmates and engage in a teacher-directed activity that um, just provides some social interaction outside of their academic day. We'll have something similar for third grade in a weekly lunch bunch. 
and our fourth and fifth graders will participate in house activities starting right at the beginning of the year. They'll have a choosing ceremony to find out what house they're in and in the first month of school have their first meeting and their first house competition. Uh, for our parents as well, we will have some virtual events. Our kinder and our new parent families will have a, a virtual orientation for you as well as a video tour so you can get to know our building better. And for all of our families, we will have a virtual meet the teacher. And so we're excited to get started on all these things very soon. Monet, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your, your lower school examples. Uh, and to give us a glimpse of uh, the kind of things that might be happening at upper schools with uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th graders, high schoolers, Dr. William Rutherford, uh, headmaster of Great Hearts Monta Vista North, uh, our first upper school in the state of Texas. Dr. Rutherford. Thank you, Mr. Ellison, Headmaster Lesner. Um, we are committed here at Monte Vista, as are all Great Hearts Texas schools, at building and developing school culture this year. We're going to start off with a virtual assembly to introduce our theme. We're going to um, we're going to distribute our blazers to our senior class of 2021, and we're going to recognize and exhort our incoming freshmen. Very excited about that. In addition, in week two, I'm going to begin hosting a series of lunches with the headmaster. These will be small grade specific uh, opportunities for students uh, to interact with me and for us to share ideas about how we can build and uh, cultivate uh, the, the body of culture here at, uh, at our school. Uh, for those who are new to our community, we're going to be hosting a new parent orientation on August 11th. And we're also going to begin hosting new student orientations on August 18th. These are going to be small, short, brief sessions um, spread out over three weeks, two times a week to introduce students to uh, various aspects of our uh, culture, uh, give them some guidance on organizational skills and instructional uh, matters, and then also to give them a virtual tour of campus. So even though we can't be on campus yet, uh, we're very excited to host these opportunities. We're gonna continue to look for opportunities like this um, so that we can build that beautiful culture that you as families uh, look forward to and, and want to participate and want your students to participate in in a Great Hearts Texas community. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Will. Uh, just to, to wrap it up, you know, folks, uh, a lot of families uh, have expressed concerns that when students are back in the building uh, and, uh, and then another group of students uh, have, have chosen to continue distance learning. Many families have expressed worries that, that their distance learners won't be able to stay plugged in uh, to the life and community of their, of their school. So uh, all those wonderful things Will and Monet just talked about, our schools are also planning in a very intentional way to make sure that we're creating forms of community that remote learning students, distance learners, uh, can, can participate in and stay connected with their students inside, uh, with their fellow students, their peers inside the school. Uh, so when we get there and we're excited to bring students and teachers back into the building, we're also excited to build new ways to connect students at home with the students who are in the classrooms as well. Thank you so much, Andrew. I hope everyone heard uh, through our conversation so far today, an emphasis on those three anchors of an equivalent Great Hearts education online, of high student expectations for attendance and engagement, and a focus on community and culture. We're committed to providing a high quality online learning for all students uh, and are eager to partner with you all in the coming year to make that a reality. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and turn to some Q&A. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with two questions that many of you submitted in advance. The first one is top of mind for many families across our state. I'll turn over to Mr. Andrew Ellison. For sure. Uh, and top of mind for, for many students, I would imagine as well. And the question is, will Great Hearts Texas distance learning students have to wear uniforms? And the answer is yes. Uh, the uniform is such an important piece uh, of our ethos and our identity as students. When we put on the uniform, just like when a firefighter puts on his uniform or a soldier, a uh, Marine puts on her uniform, right? We're communicating. We're here to work. And we have a, a focus and an identity and an ethos that we are participating in. So yes, just like last spring, uniforms will be required for students in distance learning. Now we're on camera here, so you can see from the, uh, the tops up. Uh, some students will have opportunities to wear their, their school spirit wear at different times, but 
uniforms will be essential, will be required for participation in great arts distance learning this upcoming year. Thank you, Andrew. Another question that we got uh, was around online platforms. So what online platforms and tools will be utilized for Great Hearts Texas distance learning? Uh, we will continue to use Google Classroom as our one-stop shop for posting assignments, videos, turning in assignments, receiving academic feedback. We will also continue to use Zoom as our synchronous video tool for live virtual classrooms, tutoring and, and more. G Suite for education, uh, supports compliance with FERPA and COPA, and has also signed the Student Privacy Pledge. We at Great Hearts own and oversee the Google Classroom accounts and all student privacy data, and only administrators, teachers, and students can access the classroom. Zoom provides features to help teachers maintain secure meeting spaces, protects data in transit and at rest, and does not monitor, view, or track the video or audio content at any moment. We have turned on all of the most secure protocols for Zoom to ensure that just like in the classroom, the Great Hearts Zoom classroom is safe and orderly. Uh, all right, gentlemen, we also had a question come through the, the live feed about the schedule, several questions about the schedule. I think we went over that pretty quickly, but if we could, if we could return to that and drill into what the day will look like for a scholar, that would be really good if we could spend a bit more time on that. Great. Um, Matt Vlavich and Alicia Landry, could you jump back on as we re-review our instructional schedule? Okay. Yes. So uh, our goal is to have a morning check-in um, and this will be consistent every morning. Some of the check-ins will take place via Zoom. Some will, um, for the older students, may uh, be logging into a Google Classroom and checking in. But the goal is to review the agenda and to connect with the teacher. We will have literature and math and other core content. Um, and it may be through video, it may be through Zoom Classroom, or it may be through logging on just uh, through Google Classroom. So the, the most may vary, but um, what students will get through brick and mortar will also happen um, through our remote learning. Matt? Yeah, again, just to echo that, uh, that this schedule was built by teachers. And so um, they, they've, they've already kind of negotiated and worked out between them, uh, working together as a team to film lessons and to upload things so that they're, they're there in Google Classroom and ready for our students uh, when, when the schedule time is. Uh, so thank you so much, Alicia and Matt. Just to, to build on that, we want to make sure that students are set up for at home learning success and that you as parents are set up for at home learning success. And so the morning check in to run through a schedule is a scaffold for kids and for families. Um, the additional Zoom classrooms, the live classrooms and the asynchronous recorded instruction is a scaffold for students and also for, for, for families. And we will be better leveraging Google Classroom as a learning tool as a learning platform to submit learning and to receive academic feedback in an ongoing basis. Yeah, I also just wanted to, to share too um, that your headmasters are gonna run a, a, an academy specific town hall. I think Andrew and Curtis, that's coming next week. Uh, so they're gonna drill down into your student specific schedule. This, this schedule is exemplary of what you'll be finding, uh, but you'll be getting more detail directly from your headmaster and teachers for your, your, your student. Yeah, I, I know that in my my home last spring, right? We all the best laid plans we had as a as a family for bringing structure to distance learning. Uh, they would be strong on Monday, and then we'd we'd kind of dip after that. And we might have a family start time of 9 a.m. on Monday, and Tuesday it was 9:30 ish, and by Friday it was maybe 10:45 or 11 o'clock. I'm so excited about this new structured, more structured approach to remote learning. It's really going to be helpful for our family uh, and, and for, for our kids. Um, I see a, another question that was submitted by a lot of folks in advance. Uh, the question is, are we still going to get a chance to have a meet the teacher night? Uh, this is a beloved tradition for uh, lower school families. The answer is yes. Uh, Monet Lesner already mentioned earlier, all of our schools, our lower schools, are planning uh, those those uh, equivalent events for Meet the Teacher, uh, where, whether it'll be whole class or small groups getting to meet online 
uh, get a Zoom introduction to their teacher, maybe a little peek around their classroom, which will be uh, set up and waiting for them uh, when they're able to uh, return to the building. So uh, yes, watch for details from your children's own lower school uh, about what a Zoom-based or online virtual Meet the Teacher night is, uh, is going to look like. Great, thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, there are a few other questions coming in both in advance and right now with regards to technology and computers. So first, what if I don't have enough computers? Um, well, first, in order for students to fully engage in Great Hearts Texas Distance Learning, we do expect one computer for every student. And we will leverage our resources and technology uh, and the technology survey to identify and address the needs to make sure that all students are set up for success and to engage successfully in Great Hearts Texas Distance Learning. Uh, at this moment in time, we've already purchased 2,100 student computers in anticipation of the need. They are arriving on Friday and then will be distributed to campuses. As we get your survey data, we'll be sorting through that carefully and campuses will distribute devices no later than August 7th. Another question immediately following that one is how will Great Heart set me and my student up for success to best use this technology? Um, first, I wanna share that we are, we are building and have set up the design for family IT support. Great Hearts will support both Mac and Windows devices through a three-tiered system. The first is training guides, FAQs, and early access to Google Classroom. The second is email questions and phone calls with answers. And the third will be an escalated response protocol so that if you have a challenge and those things are not helping you to meet the challenge, we will meet you where you're at to make sure that technology is not a barrier for student learning and student engagement. Additionally, students and families will have onboarding um, for technology. In the first week of the school year, teachers will be introducing the technology to all students and having them practice it well. Uh, in the beginning of the year, procedures and routines are incredibly important to create safety and order in the classroom. Now, those procedures and routines will be different online. Technology will be paramount among them. And so teaching students how to use video on, video off, audio on, audio off. Here's how you access Google Classroom will be uh, prioritized at all schools um, to set up students for success. Thank you, Curtis. Another, another question coming on that has technology implications as well as instructional questions from the, the Facebook live feed. Is there a reason that the classroom cannot be on video live like some of the public schools are doing where you know, you're just actually uh, video casting the, uh, the classroom live? Why, why aren't we using that approach uh, at Great Hearts Texas? Yeah, I'll start and then open it up, of course, for my colleague to add in. Uh, we've been doing a lot of research on what is the best learning method online. Um, and it is true that in some cases, classrooms will be streaming synchronously the in-person learning for students online to build those, those connections. However, what research has found and what best practice is in an online learning environment is that students do, it is best for students to have their instructor focused on them online. So a synchronous class with the teacher, and with online students gives the instructor a lot more opportunity to engage online. Um, and so we are setting up a, our learning in a way that is aligned to best practice nationally and internationally. Yeah, that, uh, thanks for that question. That's a wonderful question. Um, we don't wanna create distance learning as sort of a second class citizenship in Great Heart Schools. Uh, and there's a lot of evidence that shows that that's what happens in effect when students at home are watching uh, a class being taught in person. Uh, it's not the same, it's not personal, it's not intellectually engaging. Another piece is, look, research shows, and a lot of parents know this, we want kids to have breaks from screen time. You know, live casting school all day long, that would be hours and hours of uninterrupted consecutive screen time. That's not good for students' minds, it's not good for their eyes, uh, it's not good for their bodies. Uh, so, uh, you know, these are all some good reasons for why we're building, I think, a more intentional, uh, frankly, it's, it's a harder, it's a more difficult to put together approach 
uh, to distance learning because it's going to be better for the distance learners. Thank you. Another question that was uh, sent in, in advance, and there's a number of questions along these lines. Can I opt out of the initial weeks of online instruction? Um, first of all, in order to provide an equivalent online education, equivalent rigor, equivalent learning, equivalent engagement, then student attendance and engagement must also be equivalent, as Andrew Ellison said earlier. To answer the question plainly, no. Online attendance and engagement expectations are the same uh, as in person and missing multiple days in a row and many across the year will have consequences, not only on student learning, but also on enrollment and retention. The Texas Education Agency has set a clear and high bar for required student attendance and engagement and our approach is in alignment with that state policy. Additionally, TEA rules still apply for high school courses, which begin in middle school years at Great Hearts. These rules stipulate that if students don't attend their courses, they will not receive credit for that course on their high school transcript. Uh, at Great Hearts, we expect our students to be here 97% of the year. And so, so we ensure they are receiving an outstanding education. Thank you for that question. Gentlemen, a, a question that's been coming in off the feed. We received a few questions to, to this theme. How will special education work in Great Hearts, Texas distance learning this fall? Uh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, and uh, the, the answer is like last spring, uh, special education services will be fully delivered in accordance with uh, what is prescribed in IEPs from the beginning. Families are going to be asked to sign consent forms uh, to have services, uh, whether those are in a speech and language therapies or occupational therapies or other things like that delivered online by uh, our, our, our service providers who ordinarily would be meeting with students inside the building. Uh, students' lessons, students' assignments will be modified in accordance with IEPs. Uh, and families are going to have IEP review meetings over Zoom uh, early on in the semester, just as they would uh, in, in, in a brick and mortar environment. So um, our special education teams at the campuses, our campus coordinators and teachers, uh, I'll also add in there uh, also our, 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 our dyslexia specialists, our English language learning specialists, and our statewide support uh, are fully mobilized uh, to make sure that special education students uh, and some students in those other categories also are getting a free and appropriate public education uh, to the maximum extent uh, of, of our promises to families uh, from the very beginning of, of distance learning this upcoming year. Thank you, Andrew. To, to build on that, we're committed to equitably serving our students. And what that means is giving students what they need, not just something equal. Uh, students who are behind academically will receive more. Students with IEPs and specific accommodations will receive more uh, to ensure that we're not leaving anybody behind uh, in this coming season. Gentlemen, another question that's come across, uh, I think it's a really important one, which will, will clarify how the teachers will serve the scholars this fall, is once students are allowed to return to the building, re allowed to return to campus when, when we can do that, and we're excited about that, how will their teachers balance the students in class and through Great Hearts Distance Learning? Is it the same teacher teaching both? How will, they, how will those teachers strike that balance? Just to start off, uh, it's a great question because it is a challenge. Um, and I just wanna send a huge thank you to our headmasters and to our faculty who are essentially going to be running two schools, one in person and one online with the same number of people. Uh, right now, schools are setting up their sections based on the information you provide. And we'll be updating that information uh, as the uh, return to learning survey comes out. As a reminder, the deadline is August 1st for that. Uh, most sections will be set up. Um, sections will either be blended where students are, where teachers are teaching some in-person students and some online students. Some sections will be completely in-person and some sections will be completely online. So numbers matter a lot in the setup of these sections and, and in the setup of who teaches who, whether it's online, in person, or blended sections. 
Great, thank you, gentlemen. Um, we have a, a, maybe one or two more questions from the, the, the Facebook live feed, and then we're gonna transition to our brick and mortar reopening. To be clear, there will be more time for questions at, at the very end as time allows. And then uh, your headmasters will be running academy specific town halls where you can go deeper to how Great Hearts Distance Learning will, will be realized at, at your school. Here's a question for the, we have quite a few kindergarten parents coming in. Uh, this, this fall, we're so excited for those, those kinders to come to us uh, to begin their Great Hearts journey. How is it going to work virtually? How is it going to How is Great Hearts Distance Learning going to, the Great Hearts Distance Learning going to work for a kindergarten scholar? Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful question. And actually, I'd, I'd love to punt here uh, to one of our lower school headmasters, uh, anyone who'd like to, to respond and give a little picture of, of what virtual kindergarten is going to look like at, at Great Hearts. So Mrs. Lesner or Mrs. Keffer uh, or Mr. Vlavich, uh, if anyone would like to share your kindergarten plans, we'd love to love to know about that. Trinette, why don't you go first? Um, so we've, we've been talking a lot about this um, uh, and, and just be really honest with you all out there, our, our teachers are still on their very short summer break. Um, and so many of them have been willing to, to already engage in this conversation, but more will be flushed out as they come in. Um, but talking a lot about handwriting and formation of letters um, and the, the, just the phonics Pigs program, um, I think a lot of us are talking about whiteboards for our kindergartners and offering those to students as part of your supplies that you get that will have lines on them that students will be able to practice and then show their teacher. So there's gonna be a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, or small group activities for phonics-based um, spalling um, instead of maybe whole group instruction so that the students will have that um, capability. Um, I saw Monet uh, nodding your head. Maybe you can even speak a little bit more to that. So we're planning very similarly to um, utilize Zoom with small groups and individual students. We're gonna be sending home um, with their school supplies. We're doing a big school supply pickup. Parents will get information about that, but whiteboards and um, Mac and tab readers and lots of things uh, so that they can still participate in all those same activities we would have done and really utilizing our teacher apprentices um, and, and getting that, that interaction through Zoom. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add is that uh, so many of our teachers are really kind of inspired by this need to innovate and, and figure it out. Uh, I've had a couple of teachers already that have started filming each other, teaching lessons in different modes uh, to, to see, uh, I mean, a lot of experimenting to see what's gonna work best uh, and, and being really critical of each other and thinking of uh, how we can best provide uh, the digital version of that education. Well, well, well thank you, Headmasters, so much uh, for that guidance. And once again, you'll get lots more details, families, when you meet with your Headmasters next week and with their, their uh, town halls. But I, I just want to wrap up this portion, then we'll, we'll go to, to the, the brick and mortar return. But Mr. Ellison or Mr. Indoor, if any final words you would want to offer to this portion of our, our town hall, any, any sort of closing, closing remarks right now? All right. Too much politeness here, too much deference. Uh, Zoom etiquette is a whole new kinds of thing because there's a, a little bit of delay time and that's something we're, we're excited to work on with our scholars this upcoming year, uh, building a whole new set of habits for uh, etiquette and socialization uh, in, in a Zoom conference, uh, which is something all of us adults had to learn uh, last spring. We're excited to bring that uh, to, to the online, to the distance learning uh, classroom this this upcoming year. We know this is going to be new. Um, the watchword that we have imposed upon ourselves and that headmasters are, are bringing to, to faculty as our motto uh, for planning right now and our, our motto for um, how we're going to execute on our, our promises as great hearts in, in, in the new school year is flexibility. Flexibility. Everybody's going to have to be flexible. Plan, 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 uh, and then be ready to change your plans when something changes. You know, right now we're, we're, we're looking forward to the, the time in September uh, when according to current county orders, 
uh, in North Texas here in San Antonio, uh, when, when it looks like we're going to be able to come back into the classrooms uh, and then branch off distance learning and, and in building learning. But we got to be flexible. We got to be ready for uh, different orders coming on later in August or even into September. Students will be working with particular teachers in distance learning. Uh, and then when they come back to the, the classroom, those teachers might change uh, because everybody's going to have to be flexible and adapt and be willing to uh, go through a, a, a form of education this upcoming year uh, that is that doesn't have the same kind of predictability and continuity and stability as, as we want and expect in in-person, in, 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 uh, in building, in school learning. Um, but I hope what you've heard here is that um, we're planning for the maximum amount of structure and consistency and predictability for our students that we can at any time. Uh, whether that's for all of our Texas learners at the beginning of the year or for our distance learners uh, who've chosen that program after we get into, uh, into the, the rest of the school year. Everybody's gonna have to be flexible uh, and be willing to change and adapt. And Great Hearts is we're working our tails off on multiple plans so that when we have to adapt and change, we've got structures in place. Our teachers know what to do. Our schools know what to do so that your children will know what to do and families will know how to adapt uh, to the changing circumstances of this upcoming school year. Yeah, and just to echo on that, uh, we are approaching this with confidence and humility, right? And, and flexibility takes confidence in our plans and our people in our curriculum and our mission and humility to know that we don't know everything we know and we need to know. We will learn things next week and next month and next quarter, next semester, and many of those things from you um, so that we can continue forward in partnership. So thank you. And I think our greatest confidence is in our teachers, right? Mm -hmm. Those incredible women and men uh, who, who deliver the education to, to our children every day. Um, they're the ones who are going to be making this work. They're the ones who are going to be serving our kids. And we have so much confidence in Great Hearts teachers, so much confidence in our schools and our headmasters uh, to do the very best, not merely to survive, but to thrive in the context of distance learning this upcoming year. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen and headmasters for that presentation um, and answering the questions. I do know there are quite a few questions my colleagues have told me have come in through the feed regarding how two, work, two working parents will adjust and handle uh, this distance learning time up until a building's open again. So we will come back to that really important question here in this town hall. Thank you for that questions, those questions, they're very critical. So we will come back to that. Um, so there will be some general Q&A time at the end here. I'd like to transition to Mr. Denton, if Den Mr. Denton will be coming on and presenting our return to campus plan. So David, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan, I appreciate it. Uh, hello everybody, good morning. Uh, we're gonna talk about the return to the building plan right now. And uh, there's been a lot has changed since the last town hall, the last time we met. And so I do want to walk you through what's changed uh, from a uh, regulatory perspective and what changes that's driving for us uh, in terms of policies within the building. Um, and uh, that's, that's gonna be one thing I talk about. Uh, there's also been just a lot of questions, of course, around uh, how will we respond uh, if and when cases of COVID appear in the building, uh, whether it's in students or in faculty. We're gonna talk through that. Um, as well, and the first, but the first thing I want to do is talk about just what is staying the same. Uh, so we had we laid out a great many um, layers uh, to the plan for a, a safe return to campus, and uh, most of it has not changed at all. So let me just walk through really quickly at a high level what's staying the same. Uh, so we will still have the heightened cleaning regimens. That means the the use of the Clorox 360. Uh, solution uh, throughout the building to disinfect, thoroughly disinfect the building every night. Uh, this also means the, uh, the addition of uh, day porters uh, so that we have folks cleaning the high traffic areas and high use items, uh, doorknobs and such, uh, during the school day. Uh, we also will have the uh, continue to have the additional hygiene procedures. Uh, this means we're not going to be 
uh, having shared resources in the classroom, students will have their own their own things. Uh, but it also means we're going to have more hand washings, for instance, before and after lunch. Uh, increased air filtration. This is staying the same. The higher rated MERV 13 uh, air filters, as well as increasing the amount of outside air that's being circulated into the building. The, uh, all the work that we're going to do with scheduling to have uh, section students stay with their section all day long uh, and also looking to limit, not eliminate, but to limit the interaction uh, between the sections uh, during the school day. And finally, the uh, routines, new routines around social distancing, both uh, within the classroom and also throughout the throughout the campus, all those things uh, have not changed those, all those layers, all those safety measures are still uh, being worked on, developed, and, and will be deployed once we're able to return to the campus. Uh, but what has changed uh, since, and this is all since the last time we met, uh, we're all aware of the county orders that have changed the dates which allow us to return to the building. Uh, those in Tarrant County uh, are acutely aware of this as they've seen that uh, at the moment in their county, uh, they're not allowed to return until September 28th, uh, whereas in Bear and Dallas counties, it's September 8th. Uh, two additional things to point out. Uh, as we know, July 2nd, uh, Governor Abbott issued an executive order mandating that all people ages 10 and up have a mask on if they're in a building uh, and even if they're outside but can't be socially distanced by six feet. So we've had to incorporate that and I'll be walking through what, the, what our uh, face covering uh, policy is. Also, subsequent to that order from uh, Governor Abbott, we had a TEA health guidance uh, document that's come out. Uh, it's a very helpful document, uh, very thoughtfully written, uh, gives us a lot of uh, recommendations and requirements uh, around uh, screenings, how we screen folks uh, before they enter the building, uh, the use of face masks, but also giving a, a lot of laying the foundation for how we would respond to COVID cases that arise in the building. So. Uh, first up, let's talk about face covering policy. And the first thing to point out is, or the first thing to talk about is just what is a face covering, what constitutes or counts as a face covering. So as stated in the TEA public health guidance uh, documents, a face covering includes, and I'll just read here, non-medical grade disposable face masks, cloth face coverings. It does not specify what kind of cloth, uh, which cover the nose and mouth, or full face shields to protect eyes, nose, and mouth. All three of these are available options for faculty and for students. So if there's concern about wearing a, uh, a tight-fitting face mask for the day, a face shield is a perfectly acceptable option. Next, uh, and this was a, another common question, are there going to be uniform uh, requirements for the face covering uh, uh, that's going to be worn? And, and the answer is yes. Uh, face coverings may be solid uh, color or patterned, but must be without visual reference to popular culture, including brand logos. All of this uh, the language that I'm reading off to you now is written in the face coverings policy, which was sent out, I believe, in the last week, 10 days. So then we get to uh, when must the face coverings be worn in the building? So we have three categories uh, of folks to go through. There's the faculty, there's the, uh, the older students, and then there's the younger students. So for the faculty, all faculty, K-12, uh, they will be required to wear their face coverings at all times while they are in the building. Uh, with the exception of uh, if they're in the break room or a workspace seated uh, for the purpose of eating. Okay, so that's, uh, they're going to be wearing their masks uh, all day long. Uh, they, of course, if they were to go outside, uh, they could take their mask off then as well. Uh, please note that we have purchased face shields for all of our faculty in Texas. A lot of comments, uh, and, and rightly so, it echoed our sentiments that uh, it's really important for students to be able to see the face, uh, to see the mouth of their teacher. So uh, it's not required of our teachers. The teacher, It's the teacher's choice which uh, face covering they're going to use but we wanted to make uh, face shields uh, possible for, for everyone. Uh, next, for our students in grades four through, uh, there we go, nice picture of, uh, of a face shield. Uh, many of you will recognize that that is Headmaster Jason Dowdy from Forest Heights. Uh, 
Next item is, uh, or the next uh, category of the students in grades four through 12. Students turn 10 in grade four. And uh, that's, we, we worked with the, with the teachers uh, in that grade level. Um, and it was, you know, uniformly recommended that just all the students be required. If, if the 10 year olds are gonna be required to wear the mask, you need to have the whole grade level required to wear the mask. So we are gonna have masks required from beginning grade four uh, uh, going up. Uh, those students will need to wear the mask at all times from drop off to pick up, uh, except for the following cases or the following moments throughout the day. Uh, socially distance lunch, and we'll be socially distancing lunch as, as much as is possible. Uh, designated activities in PE and socially distanced activities outside, such as recess or lyceum activities outside, or if the teacher wants to uh, take class out for a walk or conduct class outside, if that's, you know, to the extent that that's possible. And I know many of our headmasters are thinking through ways in which to do that to give students a break uh, and teachers a break from, from wearing their masks. Uh, and then finally, students in grades K-3. Uh, students in grades, K, in grades K-3, their desks are going to be outfitted with uh, what you see here in the picture, a, uh, a desk shield. They are clear, about 18 inches in height. They cover three sides. Uh, and while a student is in their classroom at their desk, they may take the mask off. Um, they, they, and they can also take their, uh, they will not be required to wear their mask uh, when they're at a socially distanced lunch, uh, socially distanced act activities outside, such as recess uh, or in PE. Um, and uh, so they're exactly the same as for their older counterparts. So that leaves when, when are they required to wear a mask? Uh, and it would be, you know, as they're entering the building uh, and as they're transitioning within their, if they're moving about within their classroom or if they're transitioning from one room to another. Any one of those individual moments would be uh, just, It'd be on the order of five minutes in length, roughly. Not uh, wouldn't anticipate longer than ten minutes for a transition time. Uh, so limited amounts of time that the students are going to be wearing the mask, uh, with possible exceptions being uh, in a specials class. So, for instance, an art or a, a music room. Uh, if they're in a classroom that doesn't have the desk shields, they would need to wear them uh, while they're in that room. Okay. Screening, the next, the next item, uh, uh, we, the per TEA guidance, all faculty and staff will be required to self-screen themselves at home before they leave for work, before they come to the building. Self-screening consists of taking their temperature, monitoring to see if they have any symptoms, and checking to make sure that they haven't had close contact with anyone who was infectious, who was specifically uh, confir a confirmed positive case. Okay. Uh, to just pause on that definition, this close contact is a technical term as a specific definition uh, from the TEA, which is uh, uh, close contact is defined as being within six feet of another person for a duration of 15 minutes with masks off. Okay. So if, uh, if a faculty member were to have been in close contact in that way uh, with another person, and then they find out later that, that person has tested positive for COVID-19, then they would have had close contact with an exposed person, assuming it was in the infectious window, uh, that their close contact was during that time when the person would have been infectious, uh, and then they would have to uh, report to us. Okay, so if they fill any one of those uh, three uh, screening uh, areas, a uh, temperature check being over 100.0, uh, at or over 100.0, uh, if they exhibit any of the symptoms, or if they've had close contact, then they would need to call in and stay home. I'll talk through just how long they stay home uh, and when we get to the, the COVID response portion. Uh, also in alignment with TEA recommendations, student temperature checks will not be conducted at the door uh, at the point of entry to the buildings as was previously the plan. Instead, what we're going to do is ask that parents uh, take on that responsibility of screening their students before they send them to school. This is what this is what parents do, anyways. Uh, you know, you don't send your child to school when they have a temperature, um, but we are going to ask that you uh, take the temperature of your students in the morning before they come to school and make sure that they don't have any of the symptoms and that you've not had uh, that they in particular have not had close contact with anyone who was COVID positive. Okay, so. Um, 
so then we get to the question of what will we do when, uh, because it will happen, when uh, cases of COVID arise in the building. But it's a question we've been working on for a couple of months now. Uh, and so in anticipation of this, we formed a COVID response team. Uh, and that team's been meeting weekly for the past uh, two months. Uh, and it's a, uh, in order to tackle this question uh, and design both the processes and uh, the uh, decision trees that we will use when those cases arise. The team consists of uh, leadership from all departments within Great Hearts, as well as our head nurse, uh, Ms. Ava Cornelius. And we've uh, been working in conjunction and coordination with uh, both government policy experts or specialists, as well as uh, state health authorities uh, in designing this. So uh, three basic scenarios that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, and those scenarios are uh, uh, a positive confirmed case in the building, whether it's a uh, student or adult, doesn't, you know, doesn't matter. If there's a positive case in the building, that would be, uh, that would be the first scenario. The second is you have a person with symptoms, uh, symptoms that could, be, uh, COVID, that could be indicators of COVID. Right? Uh, and then finally, uh, someone in the building had close contact with a confirmed positive case. So let's walk through how will we respond uh, when each of those scenarios, it should any of those scenarios arise. So first, a confirmed positive case, right? Student or faculty, the, the response is the same. The person who is, who's found out that they are confirmed positive will need to quarantine at home and will not be allowed to come back to school until the following three conditions are all met. Uh, if they had a fever, they must have, they must get to a point at which they are fever free and remain fever free for 72 hours without taking any fever reducing meds. So that's condition one. Condition two is that if they were symptomatic, 10 days must have elapsed since their symptoms begin or uh, began. And finally, if they are symptomatic, those symptoms uh, need to have uh, improved. Uh, they need to then, uh, it'll, it'll be a, a screening conversation with our nurse before they are readmitted to the campus. If there are, uh, if there's a, a, a teacher, a staff member or student who has symptoms of COVID-19, they will be treated uh, as though they have COVID-19. This is a pass-through requirement. This is, this is from the TEA. All right, so the, that same list of three, uh, uh, of all three of those check marks that have to be uh, completed before you can return to campus, that will be the case for anyone who exhibits symptoms. Symptoms include having a fever, loss of taste or uh, smell. Um, uh, well, there's, there's a long list, we'll, we'll publish it for you. Uh, but it does, I do wanna point out that it also includes cough. And I think that one might be concerning to people because boy, what if you just, if you, you just, your throat gets dry or something goes down the wrong pipe and you cough, are you gonna be sent home and quarantined? The answer is no. Um, this is really uh, in particular around uh, for folks who have, um, if the cough that they're exhibiting is something beyond what's normal for them, okay? And I see uh, Dan uh, joining us. I know we're, we're running short on time and need to, need to get things going. Super close, Dan, almost there. Uh, close contact with a confirmed case at the moment. Uh, the, the ruling for that is that you would be home for 14 days, 14 days of quarantine. Uh, for all of these, there's the option, uh, the, the path for coming back in uh, sooner. Uh, you know, you still have to, if you, you'd have to pass those three, uh, those three check marks that we talked about earlier. Uh, but there's also a route back in by getting uh, two negative cases, at least 24 hours apart. All of the, you don't need to master all of that now. It's, it's articulated uh, in the TEA guidance document if you want to look there. Uh, but also you can just work with our, with our nursing staff if you find uh, that you're you know, in such a case. All right, that gets us to the end. Ready for the Q&A. All right, David. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Denton, for that, that clear outline. A lot of work has gone on uh, in July. So thank you to your leadership there. And once again, we're just so excited to welcome families, welcome scholars back into the buildings uh, once allowable. So that's, that's a big part of our theme. We'll be talking about some next steps on your collection, uh, your choice uh, about returning to the building for quarter one when allowable. 
Um, I, we're gonna, some questions are, are coming in on the, the brick and mortar reopening. I'll be feeding those to you in a second, but I do wanna go back to the, the question that was asked several times earlier uh, regarding Great Hearts Distance Learning. We'll be coming back to you, Ms. And Mr. Denton, in just a moment, but this really important question that came up significantly about, well, two working parents, how do they execute on Great Hearts Distance Learning and supporting their scholar at home. I mean, as Mr. Indorf and Mr. Ellison indicated, there's a there's a raised bar for Great Hearts Texas Distance Learning expectations for your scholars. So how do how do you manage that? Uh, many of our families uh, need to be at work, and so I'll I'll turn it over to you, gentlemen, to to respond to that really fair question from our families. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you, families. It's a it's a real question for all of us uh, as my wife and I juggle uh, three little kids running around the house while we're both trying to get our job done. Um, we are working diligently at Great Hearts to provide developmentally appropriate online teaching and learning. Uh, and so we're, we're trying to put in place the supports to help families and students. Um, one is the, the increased daily structure and clarity is intended to chunk and focus the work and help more students be set up for success for that day. The relationships in the community building are, are intended to build connections between teacher and student so that uh, help can be asked for and given um, on an ongoing basis. The technology training and the onboarding for students and families will help, fa will help kids become more adept with the technology and the tools so that they can do so independently. Uh, and the small group and individual follow-up and support for students uh, will help students who are struggling, who are falling behind. But yet we also know that this will not be enough to fully meet the need. Yeah, this, this is a tough issue. Uh, and the fact is that it's gonna be hard for a lot of families. It's gonna be hard for my family, like, like Curtis said, with, with two working parents. Families are gonna have to find individualized solutions that work for them. Um, some families might, you know, it might involve uh, parents taking turns, uh, working remotely, doing their jobs at home to be able to give support to young scholars. Look, our, if you got high school students, they'll be fine. You know, they, they might drink too much soda, uh, but they can log in, they can self-manage on, on computers. Younger students are going to need more support. Um, the younger we get, the less self-directed uh, students, uh, our children or scholars are, are going to be. So our youngest kids are going to need support at home. Uh, and like I said, families are going to have to find flexible solutions that work for them. Parents working remotely, maybe it's going to take the form of new forms of, of in-home child care or, or support. Uh, in some families, elder siblings might be able to, to help, uh, but that's not the case for, for all families. We've already heard talk uh, of families who are forming cooperative groups. Uh, different households uh, with kids in similar ages, forming co-ops uh, to in which parents can help share uh, some of the supporting responsibilities. Again, the schools can't organize those things. Um, families are going to have to improvise. They're going to have to innovate and be creative and find other families to brainstorm with. Uh, bounce your ideas, bounce your challenges off of friends and neighbors. Um, this is hard. Uh, but it's what has to happen given the state of the, the county orders uh, and TEA's expectations for children enrolled in public schools. Um, we know it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for everybody. Um, going to have to be resourceful and going to have to be as flexible as we can be. Thank you, gentlemen. I know that's a, it's a very tough circumstance for some of our families. I think you answered it clearly and forthrightly about that challenge and how families are going, going to need to address that. Uh, once again, we hope to get our buildings open as soon as we can, as soon as allowable. Um, that's obviously the, the best place for, for your scholar to be under those circumstances. Um, but the, the, the expectations, as Mr. Indoor said, of greater distance learning are higher. That structure, I think, will provide some support, but still, still a real family challenge there. We understand that. Um, I wanna go back we have a few more minutes for Q&A, then we have some closing next steps that we'll be offering. I wanna go back to Mr. Denton. Uh, Mr. Denton, uh, let's see, uh, there, there's, I know you had some questions that you were reviewing that came in from the, uh, came in pre-submitted 
uh, before our town hall. Would you like to address one or two of those key questions from the pre-submits? That'd be great. Thank you, Dan. Yes, uh, Trinette, if you could uh, come join me. Um, we did have uh, several several parents uh, in response to the uh, when we when we posted the plan for a, a return. Uh, a lot of responses in the survey about uh, concern around the impact that uh, the desk shields and face coverings uh, in the lower grades would have. Uh, and I was hoping that you could speak to uh, one, is this the new normal? Are we just, is this what we're gonna be saddled with uh, for you know, just forever going forward? And two, what if anything um, are, you, are you planning to do at your campus um, to maintain the culture that you've already developed and that everyone's fallen in love with? Yeah, just absolutely, David. Thank you for, for asking. And good morning, Griffin Nation. We miss you. Um, the, the, the idea of the desk shield, I think, is one of the, the things that um, is going to be most welcoming to both our teachers. And, and we have a lot of, of teachers who are, are not young, who are older, um, and those uh, students who come to campus. And I like the fact that they are a clear desk shield uh, versus a, a face covering over the mouth. It gives the an opportunity for a teacher to actually kneel down next to the student and be really close to them and have a personal conversation uh, without the fear of, of, you know, my mom says I'm not supposed to get very close to you kind of thing. So um, it really is going to break down the barrier. And we're talking a lot about dissolving the screen with online learning. And I like to think that our teachers are already thinking of ways of how to dissolve that, uh, that desk uh, guard that's up. And um, we're going to be using at, at Northern Oaks, um, and a lot of the headmasters have talked about this, a, a neck scarf, and we'll actually offer one to every student who comes back to school. And students can just pull it up and pull it down. So it'll be a really quick transition between going to get in the line and getting back to my desk. And I have to just up and down, don't have to worry about losing it, dropping it, stepping on it. Um, and it'll be kind of a piece of school pride. Um, so we're looking forward to having our students um, face-to-face -face with our teachers as soon as possible and really uh, have that human contact. That's great, thank you, Trinette. Um, oh, one more question for you. Uh, with the, uh, looking ahead to the return to the campus, uh, we're anticipating that we're still gonna have several families who are continuing with distance learning, which would mean uh, fewer than, uh, uh, the, there's the potential, at least, for the sections to all be smaller in size. Uh, could you speak to how uh, you're thinking about the distributing the students who are in, in distance learning amongst amongst the teachers in a grade level? Yeah, that um, it actually works out really well. Uh, we are a four section school, so when we have students in online learning, um, they'll give us the opportunity to put less students in the other classrooms. Um, and serve the students really well spread out. Um, our teachers are already working on decluttering the classroom and taking out maybe that extra piece of furniture that's not as necessary so we can move the desks around the room and really give uh, a lot of space to, to, to the room. Um, so we're already thinking ahead about how we can utilize less students in the building and open up our spaces and be able to use all our space as well. Yeah, that's right. And it's... Um... It's also the case that uh, some of our, in some grade levels were, uh, is it the case I assume for you guys as well that in some grade levels, the, the assumption will be, or the, the game plan will be for a larger batch of the distance learners to be with one teacher? Yes, so right, right now we're looking at having the majority of our online students uh, served by one of the teachers on, on the grade level as far as keeping track of them in the classroom, but they'll still see um, recordings of classroom lessons from other teachers in the grade level, just like they did on 100% online, um, but they will have one dedicated teacher for them while they're online. That's great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Trinette. Thank you, David. Any other questions, David, that you'd like to address? I think we're going to start to name next steps, but if there's any other uh, David, perhaps a few a few uh, remarks to, to wrap up this portion, and then we'll go to, to some next steps. Sure, thank you. It's um, it has certainly been a winding road uh, trying to figure out what it's going to look like to return to the building, and uh, the the last town hall was was very helpful. Um, the the world was in transition even as we were meeting 
Um, and uh, the feedback has always been open and honest uh, from the families, and it's it's been really helpful. Um, I, I I know that as a parent, sometimes that can sound like words, but please know it really is. We we take your feedback to heart. Um, uh, there were 250 comments uh, in the last survey, and I read all of them. Um, and uh, you know we really do want to uh, gl you know glean your wisdom and, and your insights. Uh, as we design what this looks like. Uh, I think Andrew's point earlier about the need to remain flexible is a very apt one um, because a lot can change in the next month before we're back in school. Um, and that's, you know, we don't want that to happen uh, unless it's, you know, in, in, a, in a good direction. Um, but we just, we have to remain flexible uh, and willing to continue to adapt um, as we look forward to a safe return for everyone involved, for our students, for our faculty, uh, and, and for our parents and staff. Um, but it's uh, just know that it's our it's our great desire uh, to get back in the building uh, and do school uh, the way that we uh, have always done school, right? Face to face, building relationships, um, a teacher and a student sitting together, discussing ideas, looking and thinking about the same thing. Uh, at the same time in the same place. And uh, we, we really are looking forward to being able to do that as soon as possible and as normally as possible. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mr. Denson, well said. And I'm really grateful to the entire leadership team for all the work they put in and all the family feedback that has just been so essential to us recrafting and fine tuning our plans. Once again, school begins in just a few weeks in San Antonio on August 12th and in North Texas at, in at our Fort Worth campus. Go Great Hearts Lakeside. We're so excited about our new campus in Fort Worth and Great Hearts Irving on Wednesday, August 19th. So school begins with Great Hearts Distance Learning on those dates with vigor. Uh, a couple of key announcements that we'd like to make here as we wrap up. Once again, this session has been recorded. So if you want to forward it to a friend who wasn't able to attend or watch it again, to get more details. Um, but we're really excited that our uh, headmasters will be running town halls uh, next Monday, August 3rd, for families with students in the lower school. And then on Tuesday, August 4th, for our upper school headmasters, we'll be running town halls. So those will be a really, really important uh, component addendum to go further in depth for how this, this plan for distance learning and the return to campus plan relates to your campus. It's all of, 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 of one nature. This is all accurate for all of Great Hearts Texas, but I'm sure you have tons of questions, tons more detail will be offered. I'm gonna ask Mr. Indorf to say a few more words about the schedule question. We know we've had a number of questions come in there. And then after that, Curtis, I'll offer a few more follow-ups uh, for families before we close. Thank you, Dan. Um, we know there's lots and lots of questions around what will this look like for my student? And so I want to continue to encourage everyone to come next Monday for lower school and Tuesday for upper school. That's where we are anticipating. We, have, we planned in advance to have this follow-up town hall event. Uh, and so we're excited for you all to come and join those events to learn more. This, the instructional schedules for Northern Oaks Lower School will look different from the instructional schedules from Monta Vista South will look different from Irving Lower. Um, there's a lot of core and common elements within those schedules, um, but they will also be individualized to the staff, to the students and to the community and to the numbers. When there's 70% saying they want to attend online and 30% in-person schedules will look different than when it's 50-50 uh, or a flipped 70-30. Um, additionally, lots of questions around how will community and culture be formed in my school for my students. More information on that will be coming next week as well. Just want to continue to encourage everyone to join those campus specific town halls next week. Excellent. I'm so glad we're doing those town halls. So look for that information. The headmasters will be sharing those invites to you families by the end of day tomorrow. So please look for those emails and town hall invites, they'll be running those as Facebook live events. Um, secondly, quite importantly, uh, the tech survey that you received previously is due by 9 p.m. this evening. Uh, thank you, Dea, for sharing the dates here up on the screen. The tech survey is due by 9 p.m. this evening. This is to make sure that we 
uh, make that we ensure that your family has the device or devices that they need, that you need uh, to deliver Great Hearts Distance Learning successfully. And then you'll be receiving an email from your school about device distribution. If you don't have a device for your scholar or scholars, you'll be receiving an email about device distribution uh, in just a few days. So do, do look out for that. Communication is so important right now. Also coming out tomorrow morning, you will receive a email or communication about your return to learning form, form, your family choice form. So you can determine how you want to have your student learn once our schools are open again, if they want to continue with Great Hearts Distance Learning or actually come back to the campus. We're so excited about reopening our campuses. So your family will have a choice to make for each of your scholars about their learning modality in quarter one. So do look for that form. We do need that information at this time because it allows our headmasters to plan out sections. How will students be organized uh, appropriately and teachers assigned for when we have both forms of learning available, brick and mortar learning as well as Great Hearts Distance Learning. So some more information to come this week about the town halls, complete your tech survey, uh, and then please look out for that return to learning form that you will receive tomorrow morning. So lots of details underway, um, and please check your email regularly as we get ready for the first day of school, just a few days away. And to close, we just cannot wait to serve your family to serve your students with the pursuit of truth, goodness, and beauty, a return to classical liberal arts education and the essence of great hearts. We are so excited to do that. I know it's difficult times and we have to offer grace to each other as we walk through this, grace to our teachers, grace to you parents that have difficult circumstances, but together we will get through it, all with the hope of reuniting on our campuses at the proper time and doing great hearts distance learning as best as we possibly can with as much clarity as we can possibly offer. So thank you very much, everyone. And thank you to our panel. You see them all coming on here. I'm very grateful to all of them. They did a wonderful job. And we will talk again soon. Take care. Thank you, Texas families. Thanks, everyone.